After meeting the new LG G5 the other day, the word ballsy kept popping into my head, and I think that's for a good reason. LG is a company that knows how to make a good flagship smartphone. Ever since the LG G2, the G series has been seriously one of the greatest smartphone lines out there. This time around with the G5, LG decided, you know what, let's take this to the next level and let's go modular. But before we get to that, let's run through the basics. It's a very attractive phone in person. It is also slightly smaller than what we got with the G4, thanks in large part to the 5.3 inch Quantum IPS LCD display. Now, LG is still all about accuracy over color saturation, so you're gonna get really crisp, but not uh, overly vivid colors here. It's really a pleasure to look at. There's an eight megapixel camera for selfies it's just above that display, and that's also where the glass sort of curves away from you. It's the opposite of the curve that you'd see uh, in the G Flex 2 where they would come at you, uh, this sort of falls away from your face, which is actually very attractive. Turn the thing over and you'll notice a couple interesting things. For one, there isn't a whole lot going on there in terms of design. It's in stark contrast to the G4 which had either a sort of hammered metal pattern or leather backs. The G5 has a completely metal, in this case aluminum body with no seams, no antenna seams like you'd see on the iPhone or the HTC One A9. So instead of just having one camera here, we've got two. One is a pretty standard 16 megapixel sensor. The other is slightly more fascinating. It is an eight megapixel sensor with a 135 degree wide angle lens. So let's build a camera that can sort of give us what we're actually seeing. I can probably guess why you're here though and it's not to hear about all of the stuff that makes the LG G5 like every other smartphone. The big draw, however, is its modularity. There's a tiny button on the edge of the device, and once you press that, the bottom of the phone and the battery pop right out. From there, you can swap in a couple different modules. LG has been showing off two, one of which the Hi-Fi Plus is a DAC that allows audiophiles to listen to upscaled 32-bit audio, which is not a thing most of us will ever need, but I guess it's nice to have the option. The other more immediately useful one is what LG calls the Cam Plus. It's basically a chunky battery grip that snaps into the bottom of the device, gives you something to hold onto, and also a few extra controls. So you have a physical shutter button with two stages for uh, focusing, and also more importantly, a jog dial for zooming. The LG G5 has a hybrid zoom that combines optical and digital zooms to sort of get you in and out of there without much fuss. Turns out the beauty of that particular module is it also has an extra 1200 milliamp hour battery in there, bringing the total capacity to 4000 milliamp hours. That's pretty insane for a smartphone. And LG says that'll give you about an extra six to eight hours of photo and video shooting. It's too bad though that there's no tiny internal battery inside the G5 to keep the phone running while you're swapping modules. It's incredibly well built. It's very fast and fluid. Thanks in large part to the fact that LG has streamlined its software approach over the years. And it frankly promises stuff that no other smartphone out there right now is able to do. It is one of the most ambitious we've seen in a long time. LG saw a gap. They saw a phone that they wanted to build that didn't exist in the world, so they made it happen. This thing is a blast to play with. We'll bring you much more as soon as we can.